In order to find the basic shape of the dueling loops, let's examine a well-known case of environmental collapse to show the difference between event-oriented thinking, popular systems thinking, and structural thinking. The collapse of Easter Island is a well-studied case of collapse. This photo shows two of the 887 statues on the island, though only 288 were successfully moved from quarry to erection site. The photo also shows a totally deforested island for as far as the eye can see. Next, let's take a look at a map of where the statues were erected. The statues were erected on stone platforms all around the island, except where the land was too steep, such as around these volcanoes. This required enormous amounts of trees for rolling logs, levers, and ropes. Plus, as the population grew, it had its own reasons to deforest the island, to create space for crops, for building material, for canoes, etc. For Easter Island, the forest was its limits. Once it overshot these limits, it was only a matter of time before collapse began. And when it did, the population crashed by 75%. The island's first warfare broke out. Cannibalism began. What else are you going to do if you're starving? Another thing that collapse brought down besides the population was the statues. All these statues all around the island were eventually toppled due to warfare. The society's most magnificent symbol of achievement was destroyed and all around it was about to vanish, much like the two vast and trunkless legs of stone from Shelley's classic Ozymandias. Here's the poem. Click on pause and read the poem and resume. Jareed Diamond's Collapse was published in 2005. Here's the book's cover. And here are a few quotes describing the book's goal of applying the comparative method to find the root cause of past collapses. Click on pause, and then after you've read it, resume. Here are some detailed key observations Diamond made about the causes of collapse. The key conclusions have been bolded. As usual, click on pause while you read it and then continue. Notice how hard it is to put all this information into an organized whole that is easily understandable. Let's give this a try by listing the key conclusions. Here we have taken Diamond's key conclusions from the previous page and elsewhere in the book and listed them. There are a bunch. As usual, pause the video while you're reading this. But how applicable is all this, especially number eight and nine, his final conclusions? How successful has any of this been in averting collapse? Diamond's book is a well-researched, well-written book, but how do we actually apply the results of the analysis? Actually, we can't. We're stuck, not just with this analysis, but with all of them that researchers like Diamond have produced. Why is this? Well, it seems to me that they have applied only the two tools they are accustomed to, like the comparative method. But this is just an advanced form of event thinking. What inputs cause what outputs is the same as finding out if A causes B or not. Because event-oriented thinking has no inherent structure to guide analysis, it will not lead to any deep insights such as root causes and high leverage points for complex problems. 
The comparative method is a black box model because it considers only inputs and outputs. Until they apply the right tools, problem solvers will remain unable to penetrate to the true root causes of the sustainability problem. The right tool of structured thinking will allow us to construct a glass box model. Let's take that next step and see what we can find.